Um, by the way, you're watching House Sparks Mega Worldwide. Um, when I when we throw these clips up, I do the whole thing, baby. Now, there's sometimes when I reserve the right to bail out on shit. And that's usually when it's like an hour long show or something. So I won't, if I do a segment of it, the rule is if I do a needle drop and I just do it till I'm done, at no point do I jump argument to argument or take something out of context. If I haven't heard the middle argument, I'm not going to listen to the beginning of something and then go to the end and make draw conclusions or shit like that. That would be wrong, be ethically immoral. I'm not going to do that. Um, but sometimes I do reserve the right when it's someone like uh, Rudy Giuliani, for example, um, and his long ass um, Rudy's common sense thing. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Um, he's in uh, he's he's in a little hotel room where he gets to pretend he, he orders uh, hookers that look like 15 uh, um, year old Kazakhstani women, apparently. Um, and they do the old mic tuck and, uh, he puts up his son's posters and pretends he's running for governor. Um, and it's, uh, yeah. So Rudy Giuliani, shameful. This is it. Fascinating. Everybody is dodging this shit. Everybody is, is dodging the argument around January 6th. And I don't know if this is related or not. This is just the most recent thing we could find. There's some almost there. Okay. Apparently I have to stand up according to my watch. Um, but as of, uh, as of yesterday, and this is after Bauer's test testimony and all that kind of stuff the day before, <sighs> shameful inter information about the New York times. Let's see what it is. Let's give him a good 10 minutes and we'll see Whew. if he can't make his case in 10 minutes. Uh, if he can't make his, uh, case by the time he gets to his first cigar VPN or mortgage title lock ad. We have the right to bail. Right. Ch deal? Deal, everybody? Everybody deal? Deal? Everybody deal? Okay. I'm not putting myself in the picture with him. You have any idea what I would, I could catch? I, there's not enough soap in the world. Common sense. Okay, hold on. Wait. Back up. What are you saying? Um, this is Rudy. Um, honest to God, if you opened your phone and this face was FaceTiming you, um, uh, you'd throw it out the window and use a landline to call the police. Um, meanwhile, let's, let's hear, let's hear the intro. This is Rudy Giuliani back again with another episode of Rudy's Common Sense. Okay. Why are you reading that? This is worse than Don Jr. It's the title of your show. Hi, I'm Hal Sparks and you're watching Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. See how easy that is? It's the same shit every time. I don't even say the same shit every time and I can at least put the thought together. Today, we're going to take a look. We're going to take, today we're going to take a look. Okay, let's take it. At the influence of communism. In oh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. At the influence of communism. Are we going to talk about the uh, uh, Glenn Beck's desire for uh, government ammo? On the things that are happening in America. Okay. That have us all saying, we can't believe this is happening. You know? <laughs> can't believe it. America. <laughs> How often have you or one of your friends uh, said, I can't believe this is happening in America? Um, every time you're able to continue to do these stupid shows and you haven't been indicted yet. I think that's all the fucking time. I, I, and I'm sure the woman who played Borat's daughter um, was thinking that. Fuck. Whether it's the... Uh teaching of alternative um, gender, genders to five-year-olds or it... We're, we're, they're teaching alternative... Yes, because there's gender classes for uh, five-year-olds. You mean the acceptance of other genders for five-year-olds? Like, like we, we recognize at one point it's probably better to teach kids to share. You know, Christians were famous for doing that in schools a long time ago. It's the mandates that... Um, you must take an experimental vaccine that turns out not to be a vaccine because it doesn't really give you immunity. And uh, yeah, it does it. Well, no vaccine gives you immunity. It just keeps, it guarantees you immunity. It just keeps you from getting the disease in a way that affects your system. You can still carry it. Like from meningitis, any of those, like that, that you can still carry them around. 
you just won't die from them, which I, 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 I don't know about you, but I consider that a plus. And if you don't, you are fired from your job. Well, it depends on what your job is, I think. You know, obviously, if you're an asshole campaign manager for your progeny, uh, it's not a problem. Even if you're a, a hero public worker or... A, I, I like to think I am, but I, then I'm vaccinated, so I'm not even part of this story. Um, uh, the the, the uh, uh, deterioration, massive destruction of our criminal justice system, uh, paid for by George uh, Soros. Oh. Uh, Super Jew gets a mention. Um, we're only a minute and six seconds in, and we're already dunking on Super Jew. All over the country, record levels of murder. Record levels of murder. I mean, I can barely um, tell the difference. But let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you seen uh, like, where is it? Let's see this here. I'm waiting for something to load. You heard me. There it is. Okay. I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, Um, lock. One second, turn that off. Um, there you go. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen these. These are recent pictures of, of New York, by the way. Um, but like these are, uh, I mean, recent in terms of the, uh, heating up of matter after the Big Bang and the Earth cooling and planets being formed. Um, it's recent because it's from the 70s. This is a uh, 1970s New York. Um, just saying, late 70s. There you go. It's just kind of in general. It's just it, there you go. Just uh, remember the good old days. Those were the days, and you know who you were then. Girls were girls, and men were men. Jeez, it's it. So much has changed. This is a woman with no teeth and who's probably blind and has one eye playing the accordion on the subway for uh, money, allegedly. It uh, looks like that's what the can is for. And uh, I would like to say that uh, she's blind, carrying an accordion, and she's standing on a moving subway train with without holding on to anything. I'm just saying this woman could outpace Trump on a ramp. Let's just be honest. She's got better pins. Um, yeah, so um, anyways, Amer uh, yeah, America was fantastic. And then um, all of a sudden. 2020 in which 750 riots took place. <laughs> yeah, but uh, only about 30 of them charted. And Portland took, ate up a lot of footage. Uh, 25 police officers killed, hundreds more killed, wounded, stores destroyed. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Civil unrest around racial violence towards black people from cops and the perceived idea that um, there's two systems of justice and the outrage that came from that spawned both protests and rioting. Yeah, we're all up to date on that shit. And by the way, at no point did any of those people uh, try to stop a single person from voting. All those riots, 750 riots didn't interrupt one person's attempt at voting. Not a one. Cars burned. Billions. Oh, no, not cars. Billions of dollars stolen. In, I hope it wasn't in the burnt car. Very few people held to consequence. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like the thousands that showed up and attacked the Capitol and only 800 of them have been charged. And the vice presidential candidate of the Democratic Party bailing them out. Well, no, not bailing out the people who were violent, bailing out the people who were scooped up and with the violent people who were protesters who were in many ways trying to slow it down or uh, create outreach or those kind of things. Yeah. And um, all these things just keep happening. And we, and no, they don't. I, I don't know if you know this, Rudy, since you don't go outside um, except to uh, break wind out of spite. Um, there aren't any riots happening. <laughs> not a fucking one. 
And with these gas prices... We, we go through a, a created inflation recession. A created inflation. So it's on purpose. Okay, so this is communism. This is the communism part. Commies want, the, want capitalism to be destroyed. So they are creating inflation like they have <clears throat> every time there's an, a price spike in oil in our history. Because we cut off our energy independence. Uh, no, we didn't. We're still energy independent. It's just the price overall worldwide has gone up and we don't own those companies because we're not communists. Um, so we have not nationalized the oil and therefore it gets sold on the open market and the, the price it trades at is the international price, no matter what. And if other countries raise or lower that amount, then we're affected by the amount of production or the amount, the ability to refine it, quite frankly, which is more of the problem currently, then we are affected by that price. It's at $103 right now. And, and instead of, uh, instead of taking our, uh, natural gas and oil from the United States. But do you, I'm sorry, have you, have you been licking gas pumps again? Do you know where the oil, the gas that you're putting in your car is refined from? Do you know? Do you have any idea? We buy it uh, from, uh, from dictators. No, we don't. Uh, we don't buy any of it. Companies buy some of it if they want to sell it into certain markets. But they don't buy it from Russia right now. And Venezuela's oil that everybody's been talking about, that just goes onto the world market. It doesn't come here. In fact, from, from Russia that... Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not Germans, asshole. Uses that profit to kill Ukrainians. Which uh, is the only thing that seems to make you happy. It all seems kind of strange, doesn't it? And, and uh... Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's amazing that... Um, there's nothing, nothing unnatural about uh, the human body and its orifices. And there's nothing necessarily unpleasant about a lollipop. But when someone like Rudy Giuliani takes a lollipop and shoves it up their ass and uh, asks you to take a lick of it, um, it's, it's, it, your reaction is understandable if you think that's strange. And also, it's even more strange when there seem to be people around him willing to do that. All the questions about the 2020 election. Uh, and then... Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lugosi. Uh, there are none. Uh, I mean, honestly. Oh, no. Hold on. I, I normally don't do this, but quite frankly, we all need a break from that face. Give me one second. Somebody's right outside my door. Who's just right outside my door? Who's just right outside my... Who's outside my door meowing? Who's making noises? Who is it? Look at this. Look at this, buddy. What's he doing? What are you doing? He was meowing outside my door. He's like, you shouldn't have to look at... We should all... We all need a break looking at Rudy Giuliani's mug. Thank you, Chip. Thank you for saving us from ourselves. You did your buddy. You did your buddy. Now I gotta put you outside though, because you're going to run around in here and you're gonna pull wires out and you're gonna, yes, I know you're purring and I know it's lovely and you're a great cat. And I know you want a snack, but you'll have to go bug somebody else about it. Go ask Camden. He will give you a snack, I promise, okay? Go ask Camden if for a snack. He will totally give you one. He, will told, he totally wants to give you a snack. He totally wants to give you a snack. Okay, here, come here. What are you doing? Okay, come on. Let's go outside. All right, here we go. Good kid. All right, off you go. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. All right. Daddy's got to work. This is crazy. All right. Hi. Okay, we're back. Whew. I, I genuinely, yes, we need the lint roller. It's in the other room, actually, because... We need it more than ever these days. Um, put in my headphones and get ready to listen to the dulcet tones of one um, Adolf Giuliani. Rudolph, sorry, I get those names mixed up all the time. I mean, I think, we, you know, I hope you all appreciate that uh, if um, uh, we, were, we were all this close in history to singing Adolf the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Reindeer. If, they, if, it, if branding was what it is today... Uh, he, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer would have been Adolf because it would have moved him 
to the front of the book pile. I'm just saying, and would have been a nightmare. Um, what I, all right, <laughs> we're this close. All right, here we go. So let's back to, back to this. Oh God, honestly, a face like that will age a cat. Like if your cat comes in and sees that picture, they're just going to be like, oh my God, he was a kitten. Now he's like 18 and with bad kidneys. The deliberate, uh, uh, what? The deliberate election of an incompetent president who doesn't see. Yes, it was a deliberate election. Uh, and by the way, the deliberate election of an incompetent president, I don't, we don't need to rerun 2016. You know who he is, what he's doing. I know exactly who he is. I know what he's doing. He's one of the oldest people working in DC. He's been around for fucking ever. He was Obama's VP for eight years. What are you talking about? He, you know what the difference, biggest difference between him and, and the former guy, besides competence and awareness of the law and a, a general sense of decency and actually going to church instead of puffing about it. Uh, um, one of those two guys made Jeffrey Epstein laugh so hard he was ashamed at what he had laughed at. I, I give you two guesses which one it was, and it, it wasn't Biden. Twice fell down walking upstairs. And Trump... Uh, had toilet paper on his shoe and the Russians just made fun of him for it. He, dude can't even ride a bicycle. Must can't drive a car. Trump can't drive a car. So it's coming down. We'll give him a pass on the bicycle incident. Will ya? Oh, because Trump can't ride a bicycle and the Russians just made fun of him for not being able to. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see them? May, I, I played it on the morning show uh, at one point. Um, we don't need to get any further into this. Holy shit. We don't, we don't. I don't need to break away from this nonsense to go like fact checking and have an anecdotes up the the truth is it we got to get to him making some sort of substantive claim that we can shit on or making some sort of ridiculous statement that makes us all laugh and move on because that is the singular importance of Rudy Giuliani's uh commode sense which is uh you know a regrettable show and it scares me enough that he's just doing this from a hotel room with the sides blurred Give him a pass, however, on giving away Bagram Air Base, which was... Uh, we didn't give it away. We left the fucking country. We have no business being there. Why the fuck would we need it? Why would we want our soldiers sweltering in the heat on a mission they don't need to be in um, to reach land we don't need to be able to reach with physical troops just so that our soldiers can be threatened by ISIS every fucking day? It's a strategic defense uh, a couple hundred miles from china where they blah 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 defense against communism <laughs> yes if the communists go on the march to try and change the world and institute communism in the world they're gonna walk through afghanistan to do it <laughs> northern afghanistan what the fuck do we do if they walk through the south rudy shit they might meet some iranians and then it'll be like communu ter commu terrorism and then what wasn't it Whoa, wow. So true. So true. 400 miles from China? You yeah. Communists can walk that far. Communists walk 400 miles in, in 20 minutes because they all, they'll walk right over each other. They don't care because there's no individual freedom. You set a bunch of Americans, tell them to walk 400 miles. They'll walk 400 miles in 400 different directions. Not communists. Someone says... Woman Shang Tube uh, Bagram. And off they go. You don't get an airbase 400 miles from your biggest enemy. No, not normally. You have to usually park submarines just outside of Taiwan on the side of the country where there's actually cities. 93%, well, 90%. We don't know what the fuck. Their numbers are all lies, anyways. Let's say 89%. 89% of the population of China lives in the eastern part of the country. The rest of it's just fucking dirt. And if you're a patriot, you don't give it away. No, no, no. If you're a patriot, you take American soldiers and you put them in a walled-in city in a country you don't intend to hold uh, 400 miles from an adversary um, so they can test munitions on them. So they can just, what, spray them with chemicals as they fly over like, hey, another drone. What the fuck is that stuff? Yeah, that's that's what you do with if you're a true patriot. If you're a patriot, you go to all the dignified transfers, unlike Trump, who went to four out of the 96. But I mean, I don't know how you could define him as a patriot. He seems to hate America. Um, are we still talking about Trump or? He calls us 
systemic racist. No, there's systemic racism that permeates uh, our country, but it doesn't overtake the value of the country. It's just something you root out. It's kind of like it's kind of like a human being who has uh, cancer. The human being is not cancer, but you try to get rid of the cancer and save the human being because you value the human being more than you value the cancer. Unless you're Rudy Giuliani, in which you want to live in cancer stand of like you know the, a white supremacist cancer. I, what the fuck. I don't know if he knows that means we're all racist, basically. N no, it doesn't. It, it means we aren't. It means that there's systems in place that have been stuck around that we don't even really think about and, and certainly don't operate interpersonally as racists with other people. And, and frankly, sometimes we participate in, in systems that hold people down based on their race without ever intending to. And if you remove those systems, then, you know, we don't even have the accidental issue of dealing with it. That's what that's what systemic racism racism is all about. That's what you're that's what you're trying to remove, so people can go back to just being good people. We're all evil. Based no, just you, just just you, just you, <laughs> and and Trump and a couple of people you hang out with, and Kim Jong Un and Putin and I, I wouldn't blame Lev and Igor. I think they're just evil adjacent. Basically. Basically, that's that's what we're all evil. Basically, anybody who attaches basically to the word evil. <laughs> uh, how he how he um, get on with it, how he is able to to, to deal with that in, 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 in light of the fact that everybody in the world wants to come here. Uh, whatever evil we are as a country in comparison to others, we must be pretty darn good because. We are the by far irrelevant, Your Honor. Move to strike. Uh, this is not germane to the argument that we're actually having. No one is actually having this conversation except this asshole in his own head. Do we need to waste the court's time? Thank you, sir. The number one choice is the best country to come to in the world, except the Democrats don't see that. They run us down constantly. Partic um, hold on. The, yeah, the, oh, God. Hold on. Um, let's see, is, um, let's see, says America, hold on one second, I'm just looking something up, um, Well, I got to go. Hold on. I'm looking for a piece of news. Hold on. This is, you know, this is important. Uh, I, I saw this earlier and I'm going to lose it. Hold on. Um, one second. It was on, I think it was on, uh, uh, I, there's so many good ones though. I, that you can go down a, a, rabbit hole with this kind of shit um well herschel walker for the record i would just like to say who trump has endorsed said america is not number one right now at best we're number two maybe three or four so uh, herschel walker says we're number two he also says though that there are 52 u.s states so i would like to say uh congratulations to the democratic party on your four new Senators, um, obviously we managed to get D.C. and Puerto Rico, I suppose. Is that, the, is that what's going on? All right. Um, but he also said, yeah, America is uh, n not number one. Particularly with this racism thing that was systemically racist. Well, no, there's this, this systemic racism in the country. You just, it doesn't mean we are. It, and, and again, I understand why you take it personally. Now, when you see all these things and you hear all these things. Uh -huh, I go, uh, uh, this poor man. Clearly, he smells almonds. Um, there, clear, and also, his dentist needs to be sued for malpractice. And I fear for any woman who sets foot in that hotel room. That's what I think. It could sound like they're just different, unconnected complaints. Yeah, just you may agree with them. I doubt it. You may see them as a political theater. You. Well, I think it's political theater in terms of you. You may see them as a warped ideology. You may see them as stupidity. You 
Well, I say I I think it's more like the the ideas you put together. Pardon me, I'm going to move myself a little bit so people can do the Venmo. Hi. Um, you may see them as corruption in order to. Yeah, it's a it's a corrupt form of. Uh, we're just pretending there's racism in the country um, as a way to get some ching, some yeah, some cabbage. Like the green program. Uh, the green program, yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't call it the green program. I mean, Mr. Green Jeans was only on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, like semi. He was a semi regular, so I wouldn't call it the green program. Unless you're talking about, you know. You mean the Muppet Show? Just because Kermit's the host? Racist. Uh, in order to do away with gas, oil, and basically render us uh, energy incompetent as well as energy dependent. A couple of years ago... Oh, there, there was an edit there. We needed that. Okay, a couple of years. We're finally getting to the point. Fuck hell. All right. Well, I started rereading uh, the history of communism. Oh, good. All right. Because... Yeah, because there was a lot to learn from Stalin and Lenin. And you were like, how did they manage to destroy an entire country and take over the place and kill everyone? I I mean, I, I used to think bad things. But I mean, you know, you, you take the good with, you know, say what you will about Hitler. But the guy could make a uniform right there, Rudy. Come on. Which I uh, read in great detail in college. Uh, yeah, well. And all of a sudden it started hitting me as... As I'm the book, I'm hearing these things. I, I, oh, so it was an audio book. The one that hit me the most was the breakup of the nuclear family. Why would a group like Black Lives Matter? So, so the book you read in college had a section about Black Lives Matter wanting to break up the nuclear family. Want to break up the nuclear family with particular emphasis on getting rid of the father. Well, I think the organization versus the hashtag or the belief that black lives do indeed matter are two separate things. Um, I, and that's you, you, I know you guys are big fans of like overlapping these things that anybody who would use the hashtag black lives matter or believe black lives matter or write or carry something that uh, on the, write it on the road or paint it on a wall or carry something that says it is the same as being part of the organization black lives matter, which sort of you know, use the phrase as a, you know, as effectively they were initially supposed to be an, you know, an organizing foundational group, but that they had their own story to tell and they did their own thing. And it was obviously run by um, three women who, two of whom are lesbians, I believe, and one who had a partner she bought a house for uh, or what have you. Um, but the, that, that was part of it. It was that they were trying to downplay the importance of the nuclear family. Now there's an argument here is is the nuclear family separate from the rest of the family the best way for families to operate? Is it mom, dad, and the kids, and then they see the grandparents a couple times a year? Is that really how it works? And is that really the aspiration? Or is multi-generational family interaction living and, and influence a healthier thing for a community and a people? And so there's been arguments back about that. Um, uh, I think, yes. Um, <clears throat> Gambit Mojo, you do make a fantastic point. Um, Rudy has engaged multiple times in not only the elimination of the nuclear family by getting divorced, but of course, by um, uh, doing an end run around it, no pun intended, by uh, fucking his first cousin. Who's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's the nuclear fusion of making a nuclear family. So you combine two things with Black Lives Matter. Why? They want to destroy the family and they want to destroy the police. All right, you, you pulled that one out, but okay. That's why at every rally, they, 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 they say, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. That's uh, they, Yeah, they don't do that. They, they don't say that at every rally. As a matter of fact, uh, I've only seen that on tape once and it wasn't a Black Lives Matter rally. It was a group of people, protesters, who were yelling it but uh, I, I don't rem I just don't remember them passing out little plastic flags that you could wave. Like there's uh, you're not seeing a lot of like Washington Post black and white uh, photos of people who are at a march for racial equality or whatever with a little baby holding a pigs in a blanket fly fry them like bacon flag. 700, 800 rallies. Yes. And of the 700, 800 rallies, uh, you've seen that once. And, it, and again, wasn't even a rally. Don't tell me they're not encouraging police killings. What does it mean? It means kill police. Why? 
Right. That's why they don't say it. That's why that group maybe did. But again, uh, why is it that um, all Christian denominations uh, believe in uh, polygamy and incest and uh, and child molestation? I mean, the Koreshians did it and, the, and, and there's a Mormon sect that did it. So why aren't all, why are they saying this every Sunday at the pulpit? Why does every preacher come up and pitch uh, this idea of, uh, you know, sister wives and marrying 12-year-olds? Why do they do this every week? I mean, I've only heard it once, and it was from a dude whose building was bombed. But, let I mean, that's enough, right? They use the same book. They use the same symbols. What's the difference? Why do we have an increase in the killing of police over the last two years since they emerged as a multi-million dollar organization? Um, uh, I don't know. Why do, why do we have it at the same time Trump's in office? There's as much a correlation there. But. Yes. Best uh, description of your argument so far. Complete ass. If you look at their manifesto that very few people do. Well, get, I thought you'd read about a book from college about communism. Much of which now has been hidden, but I have it. Well, good. All right. Well, you read it in college, obviously, because Black Lives Matter was formed in 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 the Mesozoic era. It, it could have been written by Karl Marx. Yeah, except it was in English, and and Karl Marx actually used the N word a lot. So I I'm just doubting. <laughs> Karl Marx was kind of a notorious racist. I'm just saying that there was systemic racism in Marxism, and that's the part where. Call, you sort of call it an ideological breakwater. Oh, no, no, no. It was written by Karl Marx. Uh, no, no, no. He's been dead for a long time. Because uh, the woman who stole all the money, Patrice Kaloris, tells us she's a very proud, trained Marxist. Yes, but she has $3 million houses. I'm just, I don't know where she got her Marxist training, but I'm fairly certain that it's, uh, that uh, Martin Skrillick was one of the teachers. So why are we even in doubt that this is a communist plan to take over America? Because the Marxists that you're pointing out made millions of dollars off of a brand, used that money to buy herself multiple houses. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and, and say that I, strictly by the numbers, I'm not, I don't think that qualifies as Marxism. <laughs> Black Lives Matter makes that clear. And then we talk about critical race theory. What is critical race theory? Critical. Uh, here comes the. Exp I, I know you've wondered. Um, I, I know it's a. It's an offshoot of critical theory, uh, which is, you know, a, a, essentially it was. It's non-essentialism. It's basically saying that there is no there there. That everything has to be reduced to its base parts. And the assumption is, is that it's based on uh, that all of our assumptions are wrong. So critical race theory is the idea that everything is racist and is, is primarily racist in its construction because it was constructed through a racist period of time and therefore is inherently racist by its existence. And so it, it, you, you have to look at everything through the context of, right, or of race. I think it's fairly ridiculous, just like critical theory. But uh, let's hear what Rudy thinks it is. Critical race theory, they say, is just a college thing. It's just college, thing. academic. Well, it is academic. It was developed by Marx and mostly Engels. Mm, no, it wasn't. It's called critical theory. Yeah, that's after, that was in the fucking 60s and 70s. And the theory of it is that there's a... By the way, I, I didn't realize that uh, Marx had gone to University of Chicago. Critical conflict in society, like a, like a, uh, a fissure in the earth. What? What, Chipple? I'm doing a show. Love you. Between uh, what they call then the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Yes, that's what they were calling it in 1978 when they were putting together CRT as a concept. Fucking hell. The rich, powerful, and the poor. And the rich are mean, horrible, awful, terrible to a person. And uh, you can do anything you want to them. And the poor are wonderful, terrific, and great. And the rich should give everything they have to the poor. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's a great summation of uh, the coloring book, um, the anti-Marxism coloring book that Rudy got when he was in the crib in 1937 or whatever the fuck. And that's uh, 
wraps it up. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't teach a course. And the poor should all have exactly the same amount of money. Yeah, because that, that, you, you want to emancipate the poor, but you also want them to all just uh, whack-a-mole them and keep them all down. You want to keep them all at a baseline level, and anybody who gets higher, you knock them down. You know, it's, a, it's what <sighs> 1984 and Animal Farm warned us about. Except for Patrice Coors and Stalin and... Right, which I would argue is shitty examples of Marxism. It's precisely why it doesn't work as a system. It's, it's the same reason that Rudy thinks uh, uh, Glenn Beck is a capitalist when Glenn Beck wants socialist ammo. Uh, Putin and Z and she and uh, Hitler, who are the richest people in their country? Um, no, uh, Putin's the richest person in his country. She is not the richest person in his country. Jack Ma is the richest person in his country, and they're trying to do everything they can to stop that. There's a bunch of guys in the Shanghai sect who have a lot more money than Xi Jinping as well, and that's also part of the struggle that's going on there. Uh, I don't think Hitler was the richest dude. He, you know, there were obviously a lot of uh, government houses and special houses built for him as kind of capitals and mansions in the idea, but they would be for the for the, the fatherland if he passes away or whatever, if, if it doesn't catch fire when he sets himself on fire or what have you. But um, who else? She, Hitler, Stalin, also not the, I mean, technically there were no riches in that regard. He just was a power dude. Because <laughs> he never went anywhere. I mean, my my rule is, is you're only rich if you can spend it. And, it, and you're only really rich if you can spend it anywhere you want. So it, like in China, for example, there's a lot of millionaires and billionaires, but they can't leave the country to spend it anywhere unless they do it in secret. And that's not that's not wealth. It's a ideology. Pal, uh, Pol Pot is a good, better example, Bob. That's a that's much better, but he's not going <laughs> to. Hitler lifted himself up by his bootstraps. If only it just chucked himself out of a window. And the core of it is a mafia. Right? Well, you would know. You've spent more time with the kleptocrats that were trying to wreck Ukraine than I have. But if ask, Levin, ask Levin Igor. It's an ideology that surrounds... Uh, a con game to make certain people very, very rich at the expense of others. Oh, you mean like the Trump organization? Okay. Now, so that's been going on for 150 years or more. Yeah, that's, yeah, Black Lives Matter has been around for 150 years. I mean, I, re I remember. Yeah, Black Lives Matter formed right after uh, uh, the Civil War. So you look at the things that were done to us. Uh-oh, to you? Over the last... 20 to 30 years. Us? The fuck do you mean us? They come right out of the communist playbook. Oh my God. You mean Bush having two terms and Trump getting elected right out of the communist playbook? In order to defeat them, you've got to see the connections. Okay, to make it, there we go. You're, you're wasting my time. I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored already. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This, this, this seems like refrigerator magnet poetry for maggots. I'd, I'd get on with it. So, tell me something. Let's do it. Here it comes. Make the connections. Come on. This would be a good time to take a short break. Oh, you fucker. I'm <laughs> fuck you. I'm not going back. No, you know, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Dude has nothing. And and again, what's he going to do? Put up a, a, a breakdown of the January 6th trial? The, the committee hearings? New. No.